Hi. Welcome to AWS Innovate, the special edition for machine learning. My name is Craig Styers, and I look after our artificial intelligence, analytics, and big data businesses for AWS and Asia Pacific. Also joining me today is Dr. Matt Wood, our general manager of AI, and also one of our exciting customers. Thanks for joining us today. We have a full day of sessions dedicated to machine learning and artificial intelligence. So let's get started. In just the past few years, we've seen some really big changes that have come from machine learning. How we interact with technology has changed, with many people now having voice-driven home automation. How we interact with each other has changed, as we experience through social sharing on sites like Pinterest, and how technology is learning to learn, as we see through the proliferation of autonomous vehicles. These changes have come about rapidly, and it's worth looking a bit deeper to understand why and how. Amazon has been building and using machine learning for 20 years now, as many of you would have seen through the Amazon.com website recommendation engine and across many of the other Amazon businesses. So, machine learning isn't new, and many of the core techniques, like the use of neural networks, have been around for some time. So what has changed? More and more constraints have been removed. These include skills that are required to use machine learning, including access to expensive technologies and the processing power that's required to drive the kinds of heavy mathematical computations that are required. Now, not that long ago, this domain was limited to a few highly specialized individuals, people who had PhDs in statistics and worked for organizations that had access to expensive and exclusive technologies. Now today, a goal of the platforms we're building is to make machine learning accessible to every developer and data scientist. Let's look at some of the exciting ways that our customers are changing what's possible. Capital One is a financial services institution in the U.S. that specializes in credit cards, auto loans, banking, and savings products. They built an Alexa skill for their customers to interact via natural interface. A customer can ask Alexa, what is my bank balance? Or they can ask when their auto loan payment is due. Capital One has gone even further, integrating with the Echo Show to blend the cognitive experience now blending the voice and images for the customers. Carsales.com is the largest online automotive, motorcycle, and marine classified business in Australia. To make the car buying and selling journey smoother for their users, they built a machine learning program called Cyclops. The people who work at Carsales.com know from experience that how a car appears in a picture makes a big difference on how attractive it is. Cyclops has learned which angles look great on which kinds of cars and can advise sellers to go back and take a picture that's going to make that car look even better. When it receives pictures, it's also really good at knowing what it's looking at. In fact, Cyclops has a 97% accuracy rate compared to the 85% that humans were getting when classifying images. This is really important for the buyer experience when they want to look at a particular feature of a car, like the inside of the back seat, to know that they're getting what they think they're getting with the vehicles they're interested in. Now, while we're talking about cars, one of our customers, Too Simple, has been working on training autonomous vehicles. Now, let's go for a ride. Computer vision is identifying things like cars, trucks, motorcycles, and people. Look how quickly it's able to see car and identify the make and the model. So the car that we're following right now is a Volkswagen. We can see blue squares around some of the vehicles, purple squares around other vehicles, and yellow squares around the people. This classification is really important in understanding safety and risk. Now, later on today, we'll look in more detail at how Too Simple is training its vehicles to understand the world of human driving behavior both at day and at night. We've seen just a few examples of how machine learning is changing the world around us, and there are so many more ways. Let's look at a few of the big drivers of change across industries. The first is about seamless experiences. This is really about removing the hard edges that start and stop an experience. As businesses want to give their customers these immersive natural experiences, they want to use interfaces that are more natural for their customers, like voice or understanding movement. 
building applications that understand a person's intentions. Some examples of this include chatbots and robo-advisors, the ability to deliver services with voice automation through Alexa skills, improving sentiment detection, building better multimedia experiences, more immersive shopping experiences, and, and many more. Now, another big driver is the advancement of autonomous machines. Now, although we are in early days of self-driving vehicles, the promise of having more reliable, safer transportation is something that we really look forward to. Now, autonomous machines goes well beyond just the self-driving part of the vehicle. The sensors on all sorts of machines, called the instrumentation, opens the door for better predictive maintenance, the ability to have much richer understanding of surrounding environmental conditions like heat, unsafe conditions, or even the presence of chemicals. The automation of human tasks also includes safety enhancements like zone control, protecting areas based on video analytics. Now, the third driver that we've seen really is about taking on scientific breakthroughs. Many of these advances are solving the fundamental needs for us, for animals, and for our Earth. As many of these applications use deep learning, they require a tremendous amount of compute capacity. With that capability now available and development platforms that are more accessible to more people, this has really brought together a bigger community of developers. Some exciting use cases include genome-based treatments for cancer patients, better understanding of agricultural conditions for reducing pesticides by up to 90%, better detection of health and sickness in animals through contour analysis, and the use of multi-spectrum light analysis to understand urban environments like detecting an unusual heat signature in electrical equipment that may indicate failing components. And our customers are discovering new ways to use machine learning every day. You'll find some of the more technically capable companies are starting to use machine learning in a more serious way as well. And the vast majority of them are doing it on top of AWS. When you sort through all the hand waving and all the jumping up and down and all the noise, and you really look at the number of customer references in machine learning, AWS has twice as many as anybody else. And if you look at the enterprise, it's five times as many. Companies like Pinterest and Twilio and Duolingo and GoAnimate, FINRA, the American Heart Association are all changing their customers' experiences. They're driving innovations and they're breaking new scientific ground. Lots of customers are using AWS and machine learning and a lot more you'll find than anywhere else. And yet I'd argue that it's still early for most customers, especially mainstream enterprises, all of whom want to be better at using machine learning. At AWS, it's very important to us that we're building the platforms that will take away the heavy lifting of machine learning and AI so our customers can do more great things. <laughs> so with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Matt Wood, our general manager of AI at AWS, to talk about why we build what we build for our customers. Thanks, Craig. So machine learning is undergoing something of a renaissance at the moment. And a lot of the foundational technologies that apply to machine learning are actually pretty old. They haven't changed for the past 30 years. But the technology and the constraints of the availability of that technology have previously held back machine learning from achieving its potential. And that really comes down to a single factor, and that's scale. Machine learning is incredibly challenging when it comes to delivering on scale. It's very data intensive. The more data you have, the better machine learning models you can build. Uh, it's very intensive in terms of the compute requirements used for training the models, taking that data, applying the algorithm, and generating the models. And the dirty secret of machine learning is that delivering predictions against those trained models is also very computationally demanding and costly. Uh, at Amazon, running something like Alexa, we spend about 1% of the cost on training and 99% of the cost just inferring predictions using those trained models. But at Amazon Web Services, we've been applying and addressing the challenges of scales on behalf of customers for the past 12 years. And so today, we have customers that don't just have terabytes, they have petabytes or even exabytes of data available up in the cloud. The constraints that have restricted the amount of data storage have melted away. And today, it's ne never been easier and cheaper to collect, store, and analyze data. Customers that have data in their on-premises environments are aggressively moving that data up into the cloud as quickly as they can. And the majority of new data from websites, mobile applications, and successful IoT platforms are being created on AWS by default. In terms of training, 
uh, Amazon Web Services provides computing capacity as a utility. And we have tons of the latest generation NVIDIA Volta GPUs available for training on the platform with elastic capacity and pre-built images that allow you to get started quickly. To address prediction, customers are using a mixture of GPUs and CPUs along with serverless execution using services such as Lambda to deliver low-cost, high-performance inference on their trained models at the edge, in the cloud, and on IoT devices. And the promise for artificial intelligence, as Craig has been talking about, is innovation. The ability to be able to deliver new features for existing products, to be able to expand new experiences and even entirely new product categories on behalf of your own customers, and to apply breakthrough advances uh, for everybody in the world. So what I wanted to do was just take a few minutes to run through some examples of some of the work we've been doing at Amazon with customers on AWS to apply machine learning to real world problems. The first is the early detection of diabetic complications, work that we did with Stanford University here in the US. So diabetic retinopathy is the leading cause of blindness for men in the US aged between 21 and 46. And it happens and is detected by looking at images such as this. This is a fundoscope. It's a picture of the fundus at the back of the eye. And today, real humans have to look at these images, identify very small nuanced changes in the blood vessels at the back of the eye. And this is very, very time consuming, and it's very, very difficult to get right. Uh, instead, we took a bunch of pictures of healthy eyes, we took a bunch of pictures of unhealthy eyes, and we trained a deep learning model to be able to predict the difference, and we're able to lead to early detection of diabetic blindness in 90% of cases. Uh, this has also been used in other regulated environments in healthcare. Uh, Arteris have an FDA-approved medical imaging solution, which is able to detect uh, congenital heart abnormalities, as well as lung cancer nodules. Um, computer vision is applied more robustly than just healthcare. Uh, this is a startup in San Francisco called Huddle, who are able to take both professional video and video shot on cell phones of amateur matches and apply computer vision and machine learning to start to do detection of how a team is performing against their opposition. So you can build heat maps of where people are standing over time and even build entire 3D models of who is passing to whom and start to do identification of who the man of the match and the most valuable player is. Expedia use machine learning routinely uh, across their platform. Uh, here's an example of them trying to identify the best images to show to their customers on their website, which lead to a positive buying experience. So they have several million images from hotels around the world. And the challenge they had was which are the most representative and which put their hotels in the best possible light. And they had everything from sunny beaches and palm trees and swimming pools all the way through to pictures of towel rails and bathrooms. And some are much more attractive and lead to a higher conversion than others. And so they trained a machine learning model on AWS to be able to rank those images by attractiveness. And therefore, they're able to show reliable images which are attractive and lead to higher conversions on their website automatically and filter out all the towel rails and bathrooms which really uh, don't help with conversion. Uh, in the uh, continuing in the consumer space, Wolfram Alpha is a website which runs entirely on AWS. Uh, they call it a computational knowledge engine, but it's really just a question and answer system. You can ask Alpha any type of question. So here I've asked it, who, who recorded Pet Sounds, one of my favorite albums? And you can see just from that natural language, Wolfram Alpha is able to identify that Pet Sounds is a music album, it has an artist attached, and that artist is the Beach Boys and it can return information about that. And you can ask Alpha pretty much anything. And when we're talking about the complexities of scale and delivering on these complicated, sophisticated, uh, high performance language models, uh, Alpha is the system that Siri on the iPhone passes off to when Siri doesn't know the answer. So when we talk about delivering at scale, that's the sort of scale that customers are able to deliver on, uh, which is answering any question from any mobile phone uh, in the world on AWS. Pinterest also runs sophisticated models uh, on mobile phones and on, uh, on the cloud. Uh, they have a visual search feature, which allows you to draw bounding boxes inside pins, which are of interest, and then do a search through all of the pins on Pinterest to find visually related items. This allows you to identify a lamp that you see in a scene that you like, and then go find other pins that contain the same lamp, or provide uh, affiliate links to go purchase that as a new business model. Stitchflix routinely apply machine learning across their platform. They're an online fashion retailer in the US. 
Uh, and they use stitch fix, they use machine learning not just to identify and match their internal style experts with incoming customers for style recommendations, but also mine data and allow machine learning to design new fabrics and new garments and new apparel to sell on their website to try and get ahead of the trends of their customers. Instacart used machine learning uh, to dramatically increase the, the speed of delivery for online groceries and purchases. So Instacart, because of the volume of uh, requests that they get from customers, uh, they have their um, delivery agents inside real supermarkets picking up produce, bagging it up, and then delivering it to customers uh, uh, directly. So they know inside stores where each individual item is on the shelves, even when stores move them around. And they can use machine learning to intelligently route their delivery agents through the stores so that they're picking up the items in the most logical, time-effective manner. And they think they have shaved off thousands and thousands of hours of delivery time for their customers using this approach powered by machine learning. Uh, this is a fun one. This is a neural style transfer. The ability to be able to train a machine learning model on the style of a particular photo or a particular painting. So for example, you can train uh, on Japanese woodcuts and identify the visual style that are used to paint those pictures. Then you can lift that style and transfer it onto any other image. So you can take a Japanese woodcut of the famous wave and apply the same style to a photograph such as the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Uh, and you get weird and wacky, wonderful visual effects that look like, a lot like this. And you may ask Matt, well, what is the point in that? Uh, it's used a lot in media and entertainment. Uh, so this was a paper that was published not too long ago called Bringing Impressionism to Life with Neural Style Transfer in Come Swim. Uh, Come Swim was a, a major motion picture. It had a theatrical release. And here, what the filmmakers did was they went off and shot footage for their title sequence and then applied neural style transfer from an, trained on impressionist images to generate these weird and wacky visual effects uh, for the uh, movie title sequence. Uh, this paper specifically caused something of a stir in the machine learning community because, as you might be able to see, the second author uh, was uh, Kristen Stewart, uh, who was Bella in Twilight. And so machine learning really is for everybody today. At Amazon, we have thousands of engineers focused on machine learning and artificial intelligence. And we use it routinely and robustly just as a natural order of doing business across Amazon whether it is fulfillment and logistics, so our robotic systems that allow us to move inventory more efficiently around our own fulfillment centers, or our computer vision systems that allow us to onboard more new inventory into fulfillment centers more quickly. Uh, all of that is powered by machine learning running on AWS. We use it for search and discovery on our retail store website. Uh, so searching ahead, uh, customers who bought this also bought, recommendations, uh, customer review summarization, all of that is powered through machine learning. We use it extensively to improve existing products. Uh, so if you have a Kindle, uh, you can use a feature called X-Ray, which allows you to look inside the book that you're reading, identify the characters and themes, and see how those characters and themes interact through the course of the book. If you're watching a movie on Fire TV or on a Fire tablet, just hit pause and we'll drop you into X-Ray for video, which allows you to identify which uh, actor and actresses appear in which scene, along with which music is playing, and where you can purchase that soundtrack album. Finally, we use it to define entirely new categories of products. Most recently, this includes uh, Amazon Echo, uh, which runs uh, Alexa, the digital personal assistant from Amazon. Uh, Alexa is a natural language understanding and speech recognition service which runs up on AWS to allow you to set timers, ask questions, get the latest weather, or control connected devices inside your smart home. We also recently announced Amazon Go, a no lines, no checkout convenience store which is currently in beta for staff here in Seattle in Washington. Uh, this is uh, one of the perks of being a member of Amazon. This is where I get to go for lunch uh, pretty much every day. Amazon Go uh, allows you to walk in, blip your phone at, phone at a turnstile, then walk around and pick up everything from pastries to sandwiches, drinks, beer, and wine, and then just walk out, and we bill your Amazon account a couple of minutes later. And this is a sensor fusion and deep learning computer vision powered system uh, running up on AWS. So of all of these examples, they may sound futuristic, uh, but they're here running live in real life today up in the cloud. And this is one of my favorite quotes. The future is here, it's just not evenly distributed yet. 
Uh, our approach at AWS has always been to take technology that was traditionally out of reach of most developers and only within reach of large, well-funded technical organizations, and then take that technology and make it available to everybody. Uh, enterprise developers all the way through to startups that were just getting started in their own garage. And this, we've done this successfully with storage and compute and databases and data warehousing and analytics. And we want to take the exact same approach and make machine learning as evenly distributed as possible so that everyone can take advantage of this magical technology. Our general approach is that we want to enable our customers to build intelligent systems that run up in the cloud and increasingly run at the edge, even in disconnected environments. Uh, so we are seeing a big trend with customers who are using services such as SageMaker up on AWS to train their models using the data that they've collected. And then they're running inference on those models up in the cloud. This allows you to run sophisticated models in the cloud where you have as much capability and as much power as you need. Increasingly, the additional trend is that customers are taking smaller subsets of those models and embedding them inside uh, mobile devices and edge devices, everything from tablets through to autonomous cars. And we call this inference at the edge. Uh, many, many devices want to be able to apply some level of machine learning to data which is captured at the edge, uh, either because you want that device to run in a disconnected environment or because the volumes of data are just so large that you can't afford the round trip back to the cloud. So we're making significant investments across uh, SageMaker, across Greengrass, uh, across DeepLens to enable our customers to take sophisticated models and run them both in the cloud and at the edge. And with that, I'd like to hand it back to Craig. Thanks a lot. Let's look at some of the exciting ways that our customers are changing what's possible and unlocking new todays. So I'm Neng Ho, I'm head of data science for Intuit QuickBooks. And Intuit is a leading financial services company with a mission to power prosperity around the world. We have about 8,300 employees spread over 11 countries and we're currently headquartered in Mountain View, California. So we've been on an AWS journey since 2013, beginning with the migration of our application services to AWS, and now moving our data to AWS. The next step in that evolution is what you do with the data. And that's where we're shifting and migrating to use a SageMaker specifically. So we're leveraging SageMaker for both services, pairing the data that already is migrated to AWS with the SageMaker model training services, and then moving to model deployment so that our applications can consume those models in real time. So when you think about the entire model development lifecycle from hypothesis generation to building the model to training the model to then deploying it, previously 90% of my time was spent on the model deployment. But now, by using AWS services, 90% of my time is in model development, and the rest of my time is spent on deployment. Part of Smart Products is a product that knows you intimately, that knows your financial uh, well-being, that actually can tune itself to your needs at the right time. Right. So there's a who, what, where, and when component. So when we talk about smart products, we want to encompass all three of those facets. So personalization is definitely core to that. And again, in order to personalize our products, we need to be able to rapidly test brand new solutions as quickly as possible. Our three customer promises, more money, no work, and complete confidence. And machine learning can deliver individually on one of those along different facets. But our ultimate goal is to really embed AI and ML in our products across the board and build a financial AI that can take care of your finance, help you save money so that you can plan for your future and not have to worry about how much money is in my bank account today, right? Having that full confidence to say, I actually have the money to be able to grow my business and I'm confident that I can do that because Intuit has my back and is taking care of my finances so that I don't have to worry about it. Due to the data that our customers trust us with, Intuit is in an unrivaled position to leverage AI and ML across our products, including QuickBooks, TurboTax, and Mint. We can use this predictive intelligence to make our product smarter, automate repetitive tasks, and personalize it so that it takes care of our customers' entire financial lives. My name is Neng Ho, data scientist at Intuit. Hope you had a great time and enjoy the rest of the sessions. Hi, I'm Swapan Rajdev. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Haptic. Haptic is a company that specializes in building chatbots. Our goal is to power and build great chatbots everywhere 
And we do this by building a platform on top of cutting edge machine learning and NLP technologies. So when we were starting Haptic in 2013, we were evaluating multiple different options on where to host our servers and how we can get a platform that can help us scale along with be able to be flexible. As a company, we truly believe in speed of iteration and trying new things. AWS has really allowed us to focus on our core expertise, which is building our product and building great chatbots without having to worry about the scale and the infrastructure underneath. We grew 30% month over month and never once did we have to worry about how we will scale our compute power or the infrastructure below that. Apart from just scaling, AWS has a wide range of services which has always had a solution for every single feature we were trying to build. We use multiple different services provided by AWS and every single feature of that is powered by AWS. All of this actually comes at a very great cost and we've been able to scale from a small business to a big size business without having to worry cost on our infrastructure. As time went on, you know, we started realizing the power and of different services that AWS provides. So every single solution while we were looking at, we realized that AWS had a managed hosted service, which would help us to be carefree about scalability. And we could just go and deploy them in very short time. And that's the reason we started realizing that AWS is a very powerful platform. And five years down the line, we're still very much on AWS as a platform for multiple different services across the board. From the beginning, we knew machine learning is going to have a crucial part in how we build and scale Haptic. So we started investing in machine learning from day one. Today, we have multiple workloads that run in production, having multiple ranges of algorithms from supervised to unsupervised to deep learning algorithms. In the past, we've had to use multiple GPU instances that AWS provides to be able to train and tag different sorts of data. A great user experience at Haptic is when we are able to provide answers to users in less than two seconds. And AWS and EC2 has helped us tremendously in achieving our goal without having to worry about the scale. Building a good chatbot and providing a good user experience is the DNA of Haptic. On a daily basis, we try to make our chatbot smarter and broaden our reach so that we can help multiple different clients solve problems using chatbots. We already use Amazon Polly to power one of the most popular features at Haptic, which is Reminders. Moving forward with all the new features and understanding that we're trying to build, we're actually evaluating multiple different services to see if we can get SageMaker to work in conjunction with our algorithms to make a lot more better, smarter bots. Along with technology, AWS has really helped us with marketing, brand building, and acquiring new customers. As leaders in the chatbot space, AWS is helping us lead this paradigm shift. My name is Adrian Letchford, and my role is the senior data scientist here at Airtasca, and I figure out how to solve problems using machine learning. Now, my main focus is on operational problems. So how, as a company, can we um, do a better job using machine learning? Airtasker gets things done, right? So we provide a marketplace where people with work that needs to be done get connected to people um, who want to do work on their own terms, earn money on their own terms. We've been around for about six years. We're based here in Sydney. We employ about 140 people, and we're spread across Sydney, Manila, and London. Back in the day, Airtask was running on four servers that are less powerful than your laptop. Right now, the problem here is we're, we're growing really fast and they cannot keep up with this growth. So anybody working in the industry really knows that your environment needs to enable your growth, not block it. And that's why we turn to AWS Cloud. Any of the cloud providers, they all provide pretty much the same thing, right? Everyone gives you unlimited computing power, unlimited storage or elastic services. The real cloud race is who has the best services. And for us, we find Amazon really does have the best services. It really comes down to scale. So as we're growing, we're getting more and more and more customers and we can't manually look after them ourselves. We can't do everything that needs to be done. So a lot of our performance gains at Airtasker with machine learning revolves around all the content people are posting. So uh, someone's got to sit there in front of the screen and do all this by themselves. And our machine learning algorithms, they come in and take over. And every time somebody posts something, the machine learning algorithm scan it and makes really quick decisions. Things like, um, is this illegal? Um, should this be taken off? How much should be it insured for? Um, if it's a comment, are they bullying someone? 
right? And all these decisions are being made at lightning speed. And we're managing to pass through um, a marketplace that's serving 26,000 new jobs per week and over 40,000 comments every single day. At Airtasker, we're using Amazon recognition every time someone uploads a photo. So once a photo gets uploaded, recognition passes through this, gives us a feature vector, tells us everything we need to know about the photo. It could be, say, a website mock-up that somebody's done, and it tells us this. It could be a photo of someone's backyard, a photo of a hole in a wall. We find out all this information about the photos, and then we put this into our predictive algorithms that tries to figure out, is this safe, is this bad? The AWS has really allowed us to move really quickly. If I want to deploy a machine learning model, a really simple one, I can do that straight away. If I need to fire up an array of GPUs, I can do that immediately. If we want to process something in, in minutes rather than days, we can do that as well. All of this power that AWS gives us is, is fantastic. And we're able to then, instead of worrying about our infrastructure, focus on delivering solutions for our customers. AWS really stands out from other providers for us. So technically, they deliver what's promised, which is fantastic, but it's the way that they deliver it, which is really amazing. So we're able to have really tiny, fine-grained control over all the little details. And this means we're not just software engineers, but we're engineering our own infrastructure. So for us, we believe that Airtasker should be like electricity. It should be always there, always available, and ready when you need it. AWS has the best technology at a commoditized price, and we really can build anything. We've heard from Dr. Matt Wood on how and why AWS is building what we're building and a look forward to what the future of AI might look like. We've also seen the impact of machine learning through the eyes of our customers. So now let's talk about how you can start building with machine learning and AI using AWS. The world we live in is becoming increasingly connected. The people, the devices we hold, the vehicles we drive, the buildings we work in, the cameras that are on those buildings. Much of this data is arriving in streams, and increasingly we want to process it in real time. To really understand the context of all this data from all of these connected systems, we see deep learning being an enabler for AI systems. And so we think about machine learning at a high level of having three layers of the stack. The bottom layer is for expert machine learning practitioners. And these are people who are comfortable building models, tuning models, training models, figuring out how to deploy in production and manage them themselves. And the vast majority of machine learning and deep learning being done in the cloud today at this bottom layer is being done on AWS, on our P2 and now P3 instances, which are the most powerful GPU instances in the market today. And then using our deep learning AMI that we built that effectively embeds all the major frameworks. But we have a little bit different approach at this bottom layer of the stack than the other providers. We're not gonna try to tell you that you should try to solve all your machine learning and deep learning problems with one framework. Well, today, TensorFlow has the most resonance, and there's more TensorFlow being run on AWS than anywhere else. If you're trying to build a computer vision model, it turns out that CAFE2 is often the best choice. Or if you're trying to build a recommendation system or doing image or video analysis or natural language processing, it turns out that MXNet scales the best. We'll support them all. In the middle of the stack, there are lots of solutions, but none of them have been easy enough for everyday developers. You need to first figure out how to aggregate all your data, and you've got to figure out some way to visualize and explore your data so you know what algorithms might be worth training. You've got to figure out how to pre-process that data so the algorithms can do their work. Then you have to build. You've got to choose which algorithm and framework you want, and then once you choose an algorithm, you have to train the data. Then you have to tune it and tune the parameters so you have a usable model. There are thousands, and in some cases in the largest models, millions of parameters that you have to tune. After, you have to figure out how to deploy that model into production in a reliable way, which is a different set of computer science skills. Finally, you have to figure out how to manage that at scale and run the infrastructure. That's a lot of challenges just to build machine learning. And what happens is that everyday developers just throw up their hands in frustration. We want to enable any developer or company to have access to the same selection of services. The same cost structure and the same scalability as the largest companies in the world. 
We want everyday developers and scientists to be able to use machine learning much more expansively. So with that in mind, we've released Amazon SageMaker, which is an easy way to build, train, and deploy machine learning models for everyday developers. So let's look at these blockers I talked about earlier and look how they're different now. First, build. Right from the get-go, with one click, you get a managed hosted notebook that uses the popular open source Jupyter framework. You can use one of our pre-built ones that are optimized for your cases or import your own. We've taken the top 10 commonly used algorithms, and these are things like k-means clustering for data segmentation, or you can use factorization machines for recommendations, or time series forecasting, or XGBoost, the, the top 10 of them. Now, if you don't want to use our SageMaker algorithms, you can choose to specify the framework you want to bring in the algorithm you want to bring with it. And we've done a ton of work over the last year natively optimizing TensorFlow and MXNet. So again, you don't have to worry about any of those behind the scenes setting up of frameworks and so on, that's all taken care of natively for you in SageMaker. Now, train. It sets up auto-scaling, all the EBS volumes, the data pipelines, and starts training, either with the SageMaker algorithms or the TensorFlow and MXNet scripts or whatever algorithms you bring to bear. And when you're done, SageMaker tears down the cluster. No longer do you need a separate team to manage the training. There's really two main things you have to do when you're tuning. One, do I change the data that I'm ingesting in the model? And the second is, how do I actually tune the parameters, or what people call hyperparameters? So what we've done in SageMaker is we built a feature called Hyperparameter Optimization, or HPO. And so, with Hyperparameter Optimization, you can check a box at the beginning of tuning, and it will do the HPO for you. Finally, deploy. And then when you want to actually go deploy the model to production, all you do is you pick the instance you want, number of instances, and you one-click your model to production. And SageMaker will deploy it across multiple availability zones. It will set up auto-scaling for it. It will set up the secure endpoints so they can easily connect to your application. That's all you have to do. There's no other solution out there that lets you do close to this easy a deployment to production. SageMaker manages the compute infrastructure on your behalf. It not only does the auto-scaling, but performs regular health checks and handles node failures under the covers and applies security patches, does all kinds of routine maintenance. So can we do more to put ML in the hands of all developers? Well, we introduced AWS DeepLens, which is the world's first wireless deep learning enabled video camera for developers. This high definition camera with onboard compute is optimized for deep learning. And it comes with computer vision models that we've already built so that you can use right away on the camera. Or you can build your own in SageMaker and import them over the air via the console with a few clicks to DeepLens. It has green grass in it, so in addition to writing the models, you can program green grass to run various Lambda triggers. There's lots of tutorials and pre-built models for you so you can get started right away. We think you can build your first use case in as little as 10 minutes. Now, we've invested in building machine learning for our businesses and have learned a lot during that process. At the same time, we recognize that a lot of our customers want to be better with ML but lack the required expertise and skill set. It keeps them back from being able to experiment and innovate in the ways that they'd like to. So Amazon has introduced the Amazon ML Lab, which provides the expertise that many organizations lack. Customers can leverage Amazon experts with decades of ML experience gained from building for Amazon Echo, Amazon Alexa, Prime Air, and Amazon Go. We provide opportunities for brainstorming for new ideas, helping with the analytic modeling, and providing training for organizations to ramp up to take on these challenges on their own. So far, we've talked about the bottom and middle layers of that machine learning stack, um, now let's talk about the top layer, which we call application services. Previously, we launched a text-to-speech service called Poly. Poly now supports 52 voices across 25 languages, supports custom vocabularies, and includes lip syncing and text highlighting. And we launched a conversational app called Lex, which is really all of the natural language understanding and automatic speech recognition in Alexa wrapped up into a service called Lex. And then we also launched an object recognition service called Recognition. So customers are able to add image analysis to their applications. So you can ask questions like, show me a picture of where there's a woman driving. Or you can ask a question like, is the person driving smiling or frowning? So in addition to object recognition and facial recognition, the service is also able to recognize inappropriate content. It's able to do celebrity recognition. You can look at words and street signs or in advertisements like Pinterest is using us to do. Now, with video, you've got to deal with time and motion, and very often, you need the context of the frames before and the frames after to really know what you're capturing. So it's not a simple problem. 
We've been working on this for a while and have introduced a new service called Amazon Recognition Video, which does real-time and batch video analytics. We detect objects and faces and scenes, like a package being delivered, which is useful for a lot of different apps. It has many of the same capabilities as recognition image. So that's the vision part of those application services. How about language? There are so many other things that builders want to do with language. And one of the things that's been interesting is that there's so much data that's now locked up in audio and video files. We've introduced three new services. The first is Amazon Transcribe, which does automatic conversion of speech into accurate, grammatically correct text. So Transcribe does long-form automatic speech recognition. It can analyze any wave or MP3 audio file and return text. It's super useful for all kinds of things, like call logs and subtitles for videos or capturing what's said in a presentation or a meeting. Another new service is Amazon Translate, which provides natural and fluent language translation. So Translate is great for use cases that require real-time translation. These are things like live customer support or business communications with social media. You'll see in the coming weeks, we're going to be able to recognize the source language on the fly, so you don't even have to specify what language you're trying to translate from. The third new service is Amazon Comprehend, which is a fully managed natural language processing service. And Comprehend uses natural language processing to give you highly accurate information about what it contains in four categories. One, entities, which are really people and places, and dates, brands, and quantities. Two, key phrases that add significance to the language. Three, what language is being used. And four, sentiment, whether or not people feel positively or negatively about that content. Now, these are the three layers of the stack to build ML using AWS, frameworks and interfaces, platform services, and application services. So what's required to have the broadest and easiest to use machine learning platform with the most number of customers that want to use? If you don't have the right foundation, it really doesn't matter what your machine learning services are. And it means that you have to have a fully featured data lake like we have in S3. It also means that you need to have all kinds of security and access control capabilities because a lot of the data that you're going to end up using is your crown jewels. And you need to have the right compute and GPUs and the broad array of analytic services that you're going to work with to make sure that you're using your machine learning effectively. Then, when you have that foundation, you can layer on top of that deep investment in each of those three layers of the stack. It's making it so much easier and accessible for everyday developers and scientists to be able to actually engage in, and get value out of, and use machine learning. It's why we have the broadest and most capable machine learning platform and why you see the most number of customers who are using AWS for machine learning. We have put together six tracks for you today with lots of sessions that we hope you find as exciting as we do. We have track one for business users that want to understand how to select the right technologies and apply them to their business. Track two for IT professionals who wanted to dive deep on fully managed application services. Tracks three and four for scientists and analysts who want to learn more about ML algorithms and techniques. Track five for customer engagement platforms. We also have a live demo track, and for our Korean audience, a full track for you too. Please join us through the day, and we'll have a closing session with live demos from our always entertaining and thought-provoking solution architects, Glenn, Olivier, and Adam. Thank you, and enjoy AWS Innovate.